Hey, um, before I start today's video, um, I'm going to be advertising for Pillow King a little bit here. Um, he's having a tournament um, with some insane prizes. First place wins an, a case or um, a box of um, a set. So, um, yeah, it's going to be Saturday the 13th and um, go check it out. Um, all Blazing Vortex sets are active. Um, you can use any cards you want. Um, you can even use um, Structure Deck Freezing Chains um, in it. Um, it's full access, it's on Dueling Book. Um, link in the description for his YouTube channel and his Discord. So yeah, without further ado, let's go right into the deck profile. Hey, what's up guys? Radku here, back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. And today is going to be uh, Phantom Knight's Burning Abyss. Now, uh, I've been wanting to build this deck for a while now, I just didn't really understand the playstyle. That was before I started getting it a lot in ranked for some reason. Like, I kept dueling against it, and like, now I finally understand the playstyle of it. The deck is really cool. All the Burning Abyss monsters are just insane, and the last time I tried to build Burning Abyss, it just ended up being Trap Burning Abyss, which is crap compared to this deck. This deck sets up like three negation, or er, um, of course, it sets up Dragoon, it can set up um, Ex Exiton Knight, it can set up multiple negations, and multiple disruptions. So without further ado, let's jump right into the deck. Starting things off, I play three copies of the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. This card's really, really good just because it's a great way of getting your play started. Because if you can turbo into Cherubini, then you basically win the duel there. Because once you can get into Cherubini, you basically just have full combo. Because then, once you get into Cherubini, you can ditch one of your Burning Abyss monsters, most likely a uh, Graph. Then, if it was sent to the graveyard, you just get to special summon a Burning Abyss. Then you can snowball into special summoning seer. Then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can uh, target one in the graveyard to special summon it. It's just the deck keeps adding on advantage after advantage. And this card is really, really good for uh, continuing your plays. I played two copies of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. So the reason I played two copies of this is because it's a free special summon. This card's just insane, and um, you can use both effects, so I highly doubt you're gonna draw into both of them. Like, it's just super unlikely, but it's still really easy to pop off with this card. Like, you could go full combo with Torn Scales, Silent Boots, you could go full combo with literally any of your, um, uh, uh, any two of your uh, Burning Abyss monsters, you can go full combo with just so many cards in the deck, it's insane. And then I play one copy of Ancient Cloak, because um, literally mid-combo, or even starting out your combo, you can um, normal summon scales, use scales effect to discard um, a Burning Abyss monster, which it does gain you advantage, then um, you can ditch uh, Ancient Cloak, and then boom, you um, get a search off uh, into Silent Boots, and then you have full combo right there. I played three copies of Farfa. Um, you know, it's, it's Farfa. Um, if this card's sent to the graveyard, target one card on the field, banish it till the end of end phase. Um, that's pretty good. It's an easy way of getting around cards. Um, really, the Burning Abyss cards are vary. Like, you could build the deck completely out of the crap Burning Abyss cards, because they all have the effect where if you have no, uh, spell or traps, you can, uh, special summon this card from your hand. They all have that effect, so you could literally build Burning Abyss out of the crap Burning Abyss cards, and it would still be fine. Um, I played three copies of, uh, Skarm. Uh, during the end phase, if this card was in the graveyard, you can add, a uh, level 3 Dark Fiend from your deck to your hand. This card is really, really good. This card can search your tour guide, which sets up follow-up plays. Like, it's insane. Plus, this deck doesn't burn through resources the same way that a lot of other decks do, and I'm hoping that if we can get uh, Rusty Bardiche to 2, because it's not doing anything right now at 3, we could actually have full setup to do all of our combos again the next turn. Uh, I play uh, three copies of Graph and three copies of Seer. These are the ones that came off the ban list pretty recently. Um, 
graph, uh, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a burning abyss from the deck. I'm ignoring that first, uh, this first chunk because it's all the same. Um, but like, graph is insane for this deck. And then Seer is also really good, um, where you can target one Burning Abyss in the graveyard, special summon it. So like, if, let's just say that you, I don't know, go into Cherubini, use Cherubini's effect to, uh, ditch, uh, Graph, use Graph effect to special summon Seer. Um, then you can, um, uh, s like say you use... I don't know, Farfa and um, a Skarm to go into it when you do gain advantage to go into a Skarm, but like also you can use this special summon it back after you go into your Rusty Bardiche, then you have a lot more extenders and it's just insane. Uh, I play one copy of Libic. Um, if this card's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon uh, one from the hand. Like, seriously, this card is crap in the deck, but it's nice to have another Burning Abyss name, and sometimes it does come up. Uh, I play one copy of Kelebic. Um, so this one, the, um, effect is if you have no spells and traps, you can special summon this card from your hand, of course. If this card's sent to the graveyard, target spell or trap, return it to the hand. I mean, I guess that's fine if you know your opponent set a mirror force or something. Like, yeah. But you still set up negation, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I play one copy of Alec, um, Malabrance, blah blah blah. Uh, if this card's sent to the graveyard, target one card, negate it. Um, so the deck really easily sends these cards to the graveyard, so it doesn't really matter about um like where it is or how many you play of these three because these three just set up specific things that you can do and you can ditch them with cherubini really easily i played two copies of psychic uh wielder and one copy of psychic tracer uh, this is basically just the psychic engine um most uh burning abyss decks play or, um, most PK Burning Abyss decks play this small psychic engine just because, uh, they're all just free extenders because they special summon if you have level 3 monster. It's insane. Uh, I played three copies of Tour Guide. This card is god tier. Um, but yeah, this card is just flat out insane. Um, for the deck, like, it just special summons a Burning Abyss for free. Instantly go into Cherubini, get a million times advantage. I play three copies of Ash, just as a generic hand trap, as well as two copies of Skullmeister. I was trying to just have it a 43 card deck, so I wanted some nice generic hand traps that work really well this format, and these two cards worked out really well. I play one copy of Foolish Burial. This card's a great combo piece. Like, Foolish Burial alone can get you into a Burning Abyss monster, and depending on how many extenders you have, it's just insane. I play one copy of e Telly because I can special summon the Psychics from the deck. This card's great for the deck. And I didn't play any other Psychic cards because none of the other ones have this good of an effect. I play three copies of Forbidden Droplet. Um, I actually really, really like Forbidden Droplet in playtesting because, like, if our, my opponent tries to do anything, I can actually just set this during my turn, and this can be a full disruption during their turn. I played two copies of Fogblade. This card was actually insane in playtesting. I could actually banish Fo Fogblade and um, get back my Phantom Knight monsters, which was crazy because it just allowed me to extend even further. Um, I played one copy of Shade Brigadine. You can like passively go into Shade Brigadine. Like literally combo play number one, normal summon scales. Use scales effect to discard to ditch cloak. Use um, scales, of, uh, use cloak effect uh banish uh, search boots boots effect special summon and boots effect in grave actually allows you to banish to set uh one so you could set your shade brigadine but i'd suggest setting your fog blade first but like this is just um an important part of your um phantom knight's engine and it's really good and then of course i play the dragoon engine because it's just insanely free you can actually gain advantage just by like running the dragoon engine like, because you get your monsters off the field, and it's just really, really good. So, going into the extra deck, I play one copy of Access Code for OTK Potential. 
Uh, I played two copies of Cherubini, uh, just because I want to be able to have follow-up plays if somehow they stop my Cherubini, despite the fact that Cherubini sends for cost. Like, usually they're gonna have a hard time outing this, but it's still really good to have it too. Played one copy of IP Masquerina. I'm thinking about cutting this card, just because it's kind of useless in the deck. Oh, have you seen the new art for IP Masquerina? It's, <laughs> it's like straight up, um, e-girl, <laughs> um costume like I, I, I don't know I kind of like it but I think I prefer the original art more I play one copy um, Nightmare Unicorn because of plays with IP Masquerina and access code because you can literally it's so free in this deck to go into uh, Nightmare Unicorn than access code it's a piece of cake in this deck I played one copy of Rusty because uh, Rusty's god uh this card has insane combo potential with this deck and basically revived the phantom knights uh burning abyss deck i played one copy of break sword break sword has plays with uh bardiche that actually set up plays to go into um uh not exiton knight why did i say that nightmare um and a uh, redoer and there are a lot of plays you can do there uh of course i played two copies of the god dante uh, Dante is insane for this deck. Like, like this card is just god tier, especially since it has plays. So, um, it actually you have a lot of plays here. So, um, one big thing that you can do, Dante is just god tier, just because it can ditch multiple Burning Abyss cards, um, just like that, and then uh, it gains attack, which isn't huge, but it can add up. Um, so then, um. You have plays with Rusty Bardiche where you could actually pop Dante, then um, use Dante's effect to add back a Burning Abyss card, which sets up follow up plays super easily. Dante is just god tier. I play one copy of Beatrice because it's limited, but this card's basically an insane foolish burial from the deck, and it's just completely crazy. I play one copy of Constellar Pleiades. Um, I have this in my other build. I still can't remember how I'm supposed to make it, but you know. I think I had a rank of Magic Astral's Force. Uh, you know what, just cut this out for something generic. Cut it out for like a, um, um, a Nightmare, um, Phoenix. Yeah, just cut it out for a Nightmare Phoenix, and it should be fine. Uh, this card's literally useless in the deck because I don't play rank of Magic Astral's Force. Um, I play, uh, for the generic, uh, rank 4 cards, I play one copy of Time Thief Redoer. Time Thief Redoer is just really, really good. I play one copy of Evil Swarm Nightmare. This card sets up generic, just, uh, disruption. Um, like, my end board was, um, like, I had one Forbidden Droplet set, two Searched Fog, or one Searched Fog Blade set, um, I had Evil Swarm Nightmare in defense mode, Dragoon on one side, um, I think I had a few more uh, other cards on the field, then I had Bardiche, so you have OTK next turn, on top of the fact that you have Dragoon and uh, two dis- er, like, four disruptions, so that's insane. And then, of course, I play the Dragoon package, you kinda have to. Uh, so I guess I'll go over the side deck real quick, usually my side deck is pretty similar in all of my decks. Except for Orcus. Orcus needs to banish a lot of cards, and I can't do it in Orcus. Um, I play three copies that evenly match. This card's just really good. Um, a lot of my thing is going second, because this deck can set up such an insane board that you could, sh like, be a shoe in for game one. And if you don't really need to, you can just, um, side in, like, um, other important stuff for this, um, format. But evenly match is great blind going second card. Three copies of Nibiru for your um, virtual world slash combo matchup. Uh, three copies of Droll because it's crazy against uh, Drytron. Uh, three copies of Lancia for your Eldritch matchups. And then three copies of TTT just because you can swap it out with Forbidden Droplet um, and actually just, um, just have a lot of going second plays. So that is going to be it for the deck. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and let me know what you thought. And let me know if there's anything you would change about the deck. Would you change up the Burning Abyss lineup? I feel like I was pushing it a bit uh, with the Alec and the other ones. But I feel like the deck um, just is so good that you don't really care. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Peace, guys.